This is Good Morning Hamilton. You're listening to 900 CHML. Rick Samprin with you, waking you up on another beautiful morning in our city. Did you get a chance to check out Optimus? Not Optimus Prime, not the not the Transformer. No, this is this is Tesla's new entry into the humanoid robot world, so to speak. Last Friday, Tesla unveiled this well, this robot it calls Optimus and. Technology insiders, at least all the ones that I heard and saw from, are giving it a big thumbs down. Why? Chris Eliasmith is the director of the Center for Theoretical Neuroscience at the University of Waterloo and the Canada Research Chair in Theoretical Neuroscience and joins us now on Good Morning Hamilton. Chris, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Rick. I'm doing great. Safe to say that Optimus fell flat? <laughs> Not quite literally, but almost. (laughs) Yes, it almost did. One criticism is the robot has human-like hands with five fingers. Uh, You know, one AI insider wasn't too uh, thrilled about that. Another one called it cringeworthy. What was your first impression (laughs) of Optimus? Yeah, underwhelming really is the key word of the day, I think. When you see it walk and move, it looks like something from about 10 years ago. So, you know, the impressive part is how quickly they did it, but what they ended up with is not impressive. Given that, are you surprised that Tesla rolled this thing out? Not really. I think some people have suggested that it's really much more of a recruiting effort than anything else. Mm. Uh, I, I still think it's very strange. Like, I understand wh- where the question's coming from, because, you know, when Tesla put out their cars, they were super special because they were electric. And when they put out their or when you know Elon Musk launched SpaceX, it was super special because it could land and be reusable, but there's literally nothing special about this robot. Aside from the recruiting effort, what do you think Tesla's end goal is here? Is this to create a personal butler or, or maybe a robot that is used by businesses or governments? What do you think? Yeah, I think they have a pretty practical uh, sort of goal in mind, and that's to replace the people that are in their warehouses and in their factories with robots that, you know, don't ask for more money and don't complain about human rights violations and so on. Yeah, and uh, and uh, steals jobs from uh, from living, breathing souls. Um, any guesstimate on how much this perhaps might cost when it is officially released? So they are suggesting it will be twenty thousand dollars per robot. I would be extremely surprised if they could get something that cheap. The, one of the sort of cheaper, actually functional robots on the market right now is about seventy five thousand dollars. Uh, and it's much smaller with fewer parts and so on. So they've they've suggested it will be 20k, but I'm guessing it will be four to five times more than that. Where are, you know, aside from the factory floor, where else are robots these days? Well, you know, lots of people have them in their houses. You know, I think the little Roombas that are zipping around all over the place they count. Um, we don't see them in too many other practical scenarios. In fact, uh, you, we can sort of think of self-driving cars as getting there, but you know, we obviously don't have fully autonomous vehicles yet. And, uh, yeah, for the most part, you really do see them still confined largely to factories mm-hmm. and so on. I guess the other big place is, of course, things like space exploration and very dangerous on-Earth missions when there are things like nuclear meltdowns. You're much more likely to see robots in those sorts of scenarios. Yeah, those those uh, bomb detonating devices that police will use uh, obviously would be in that category as well. Uh, good morning, Hamilton, and uh, our host is uh, Chris Elias Smith. He's the director of the Center for Theoretical Neuroscience at the University of Waterloo and the Canada Research Chair in Theoretical Neuroscience. Humanity, as you know, has had a decades-long infatuation with robots. How do you think that's evolved over the years? Um, that's an excellent question. I you know, initially, the very first robots that showed up in film and so on were dangerous creatures, and that has really stuck around, which is a little bit surprising when you see things like Optimus show up that can barely walk. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, the Terminator carried that idea on and so on. And I think we're just sort of evolving to the point where we realize that they're, it's going to be very difficult to make something as dangerous as what we initially <laughs> imagined they would be. But nevertheless, people are being very careful about that. There are, you know, many sort of letters which scientists sign to say, you know, you, I'm not going to allow any of the uh, technology that I developed to be used for military purposes and so on. Um, but I think the really practical robots we have right now are, you know, anything but threatening, um, but also not quite as useful as we hoped. So Optimus is not bringing us one step closer to uh, a robotic world domination. Not really. It can really <laughs> bring itself one step closer to the edge of the stage. From <laughs> yeah, what's with, uh, I think there was three Tesla employees carrying a next generation Optimus, I guess a superior <laughs> Optimus, uh, because it couldn't walk. 
Exactly. Yes. The, so the first one they showed was just, you know, kind of a metal husk that was what they called a uh, research platform. And then the advanced one was really like a, on a pogo stick that, you know, it could, they could roll around the stage and it just kind of swung its arms and legs around. <laughs> so presumably there's advances there. But like I said, we have no idea what they are. And there doesn't seem to be anything special, unlike Elon's other companies. Very interesting stuff. Chris, thanks for your insight into this. My pleasure. Chris Eliasmith is the director of the Center for Theoretical Neuroscience at the University of Waterloo and the Canada Research Chair in Theoretical Neuroscience. You, you, you got to Google Tesla Optimus Robot. There's also a story, globalnews.ca, in which it's featured. It, to me, it's, it's in the embarrassing category. I mean, here's a company, uh, here's a multi-billionaire who's launching this product or this prototype, and it's not even, by robotic standards, fully functional. I, I don't know whether they're putting the cart before the horse or just wanted to get this thing out there to say, hey, look at the new shiny toy we're making or whatnot. But, wow, they got some work to do, that is for sure.